Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraAdamation.com and welcome to another video of our Isra Automation. And today we're going to talk about are we in control or being controlled by automation testing tool. So again, this is going to be like a controversial topic that we are talking in our Isra Automation channel because as a reason being, after releasing my earlier video on is automation testing is still worth it in 2020 and are we doing realistic automation testing, it's pretty evident that most of us feel automation testing tools are invading our culture of quality in some sense or at least the real essence of testing is fading away. So as I said, this video is going to be more like a summary of what we have discussed in our earlier video and how the community is really feeling about that discussion and what are the most important comments which came from the community, not just from the video, but also as an email to me and also as a comment in the LinkedIn post and stuff. So we're going to discuss about everything in this video. All right, so let's get started. So as I said, the summary of our earlier video and the discussion that we had was something like this. Too many automation testing tools options like never before, too many languages to choose and limitation in testing tool limits the automation testing effort and automation testing is getting like a buzzword and everybody is really talking about it but regardless of whether they are doing it or not, they're just talking about it. So those are something which came as a summary for the early videos and the community is really thinking that these are some of the most important pressing thing which is making the automation testing as a burden of the quality testing and making the quality engineers more distracted to improve the quality on the product. So again, like great persons always says, too much of anything is the beginning of a mess. Well, this quote really suits our discussion that we're going to talk about something like this. Too many automation testing tools option like never before. So there are many different tools option available right now and as I told before, in early 2006, when I started my career, it was just Windrunner, QTP in beta stage and test complete kind of stuff. But now there are like tools like Selenium, Cypress, Puppeteer, Test Project, Catalan Studio, Test Cafe, Test Complete, Apply Tool, Sikuli, and you name it. Just keeps growing and this is going to even more increase and you can just see the trend like past three or four years, there are many new tools have evolved than ever before. And many of these tools possess their own language support, which also makes another greater problem, which is too many languages to choose from. And again, this too many languages are just for the automation testing. Again, I have many students in YouTube as well as in Udemy and students coming to me asking whether Selenium with Java is better or Selenium with C Sharp is better. Again, they talk about Selenium with Python is better or Selenium with Ruby is better. Who cares, guys? All we're going to do is to improve the quality. It doesn't matter whether your application is developed with ASP.NET or React or even Vue.js. All we're going to do is at the end of the day, if you're going to be testing the browser based application, it is going to be rendered into DOM and you can use Selenium with C Sharp or Java or whichever language that you're comfortable with. Just go with that and start automating the application based on the language that you are comfortable with. Again, the target of choosing any language or any tool should just only be quality in mind, rather the automation testing tool language or stuff. Because if you're going to be learning a new language altogether, then it is going to pose many different challenges. And again, as I said before, now it's the language evolution as well. Every year, Google and Microsoft are introducing new languages for their own marketing gain or the system limitation can be like F sharp, Kotlin, Go, R, HCL, etc. And most of these languages, even though are nothing to do with automation, still impact in some sense. And again, I have seen Kotlin with Selenium language binding is also out. Now people will start rushing towards Kotlin. Again, I don't see Kotlin with Selenium at least because you can just go with any language that of your choice, which you are very comfortable with. Just go with it and just do what you are supposed to do, which is to improve the quality rather learning a new languages. And because these languages are coming in, now the testers are on the top of distractions by choosing which programming language to learn and how to use them effectively as I told and use case like students asking whether to go with Selenium C Sharp or Selenium Java or Python or Ruby and now many different JavaScript based programming language tools are coming like Cypress, Puppeteer and again there was a new tool introduced by Puppeteer team for TypeScript 
And again, that's going to be coming in and people will start rushing towards that. So if these languages are going to come in and if these tools are going to be moving towards that, then all the testers who are supposed to improve the quality are being distracted. And now these are happening because of one of the most important reason, which is the limitations in testing tools. Not every testing tool support every features which other tools does support. And again, these languages, as you can see, Cypress only support JavaScript, whereas Puppeteer supports JavaScript alone, and Selenium supports many different programming languages. If you take Catalan Studio, if you're going to be using that, then it only supports Groovy as of now. And similarly, you can see Ranorex only support C Sharp programming language. And similarly, Coder UI support C Sharp programming language. So you can see that many different tools support their own programming language context. And these are happening because of the limitation in testing tools, because the companies who started developing the tool didn't keep the language in mind and they started building it. And because they are building it on a specific language, now testers has to run for either choosing the testing tool, which they are comfortable with. At the same time, in order to choose features within the automation testing tool, they again have to switch to a different automation testing tool and learn a different programming language. And because of these limitations in testing tool, it limits the automation testing efforts as well. And as a tester, now testers have no choice while choosing the automation testing. The distractions in quality has increased to its height like never before. And instead of focusing on quality, testers are too much focusing on the languages to learn, tool to use, and bending or convincing the product testing and quality for automation testing. So you can see that now we are bending the quality of testing to the actual functionality of the automation testing tools. Again, we have already discussed about this in our earlier video that if the automation testing tool cannot really automate something, then we would say that the automation testing tool has limitation with supporting this. And we say that we cannot really automate that rather we can do this manually. And because of these, we limit ourselves with the automation testings that we have. And the last problem that we have with our automation testings practice within our team is commitment to complete scenario every day, like five. I've seen that many team would say like, have you completed these scenarios and how many scenarios have you completed this day? So do you think that you can really number a scenario per day? If you say five scenarios you have completed in spec flow, you can just copy paste the examples guys. It will become five in a minute. That's not something that you can really achieve the quality. So if you number the quality based on a scenario, then probably you're actually limiting yourself or maybe you are not truthful enough to say that you have really written a scenario which is more realistic because one scenario can even test a large portion of your application's quality but you can write the same thing with hundreds of scenario which can even be nothing to improve the quality of a product so if any on the top of the testing team says that you should be writing these numbers of scenario per day then probably it's not realistic and because of the testing tool has the limitation of not supporting every critical aspect of the applications, testers are repeating the same manual testing again during the release time. So I've seen that in team, they will have an automation test engineers and there will be manual test engineers and then they will be working in silos sometime or maybe they will be working together. What happens is because there is a limitation with the automation testing tool not supporting every aspect of the testing features, probably those automation test engineers will also have to work for the manual testing during the release time on stuff, which again pose a next major problem. So as an engineer was hired to do a fantastic automation testing, he'll be reluctant of doing manual testing. So how he will be coming out of the compassion of doing the manual testing while he was hired for doing automation testing, which is pretty hard as well. Now the mentality is too much towards the automation. And again, guys, automation testing or manual testings are something that you can really think that they both are something doing a same job, which is nothing but to improve the quality of a product. So if you are hired for automation testing, then probably it is not that you're going to be doing just the automation testing for long run. There are chances that a specific company will have automation testing focused where they will be having a manual testing guy who is going to be super expert in the product who knows in and out of the application then he'll be doing the manual testing which is not something that he is limiting his knowledge 
in that particular area. Rather, he is the one super guy within the team who knows everything about the product than the automation tester itself. So the automation tester can never judge himself to be doing a better job than compared to a manual test engineer because in this place, nobody is lesser than anybody. Both of them are pretty much equivalent in their own areas or domains, which is pretty important aspect to remember. Well, as that said, with all these problems that we have discussed right now, the last thing is, is the solution of how the problems can be resolved. So, as I said, the 80 percentage of the problem solution is choosing the automation testing tool with improving product quality in mind is something which makes more better decision for a team, which can be done by thinking about realistic automation testing that we already discussed in our earlier video. So please go ahead and watch there if you have never watched that. And again, test the critical areas of the applications which are more and more important and is gaining the attraction this year because a lot of companies are moving towards that rather just hearing about the automation testing jargons from the team. And again, quality than quantity. I already talked about that in our earlier video that it is not something that you should keep writing hundreds of scenarios for say a specific functionality of your application. You can write even three scenarios which can be more realistic and focusing on some of the quality area of the application's testing than the 100 scenarios that you have written. So this is the first 80 percentage of the problem that you can resolve by choosing the quality automation testing tool and doing some of the quality work within the automation. And the next 20 percentage will be choosing the languages and the tools. So choose which language the team is comfortable with, which is also very important, which plays a very, very key role. Because if you think that this particular automation testing tool is really better, and if you think the whole team is not very comfortable with that particular automation testing tool, then probably just give a thought about whether this automation testing tool can really help achieving your goal. If you let your whole team to keep studying a new language for doing an automation testing, then probably the question is whether they can achieve or improve the quality of the application under test, which is also very important. So before choosing a tool, it is highly important that your team is very comfortable with the language of the tool which is being supported. And then the tool which fits your purpose. So once you choose the language which is comfortable within your team, there are many different tools available in the market which does support that particular language. I've seen C Sharp, Java, and JavaScript is the most prevalent language which many tools are supporting. I guess Python is also supported, but not a lot than compared to JavaScript, Java, or C Sharp. But yes, these are something that can improve the way that you can choose the languages and tools within your team. And this way, we can make sure that you can improve the quality of the product. And this way, we can come out of the control of the automation testing tool rather being controlled by the automation testing tool. And that's it, guys. Let me know your thoughts of what you think about this video and put your comments below. This is again going to be like a complete discussion of our earlier video, as I told before. And thank you for a lot of your comments and insight about what you really feel about the automation testing tool in our earlier video and that's the reason this video has been created which is pretty cool and an eye-opener for many of the community guys even like me who have really understood what everybody is thinking and how everybody is feeling about the recent changes happening on the automation testing side and once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day